The Terraflex JL 4.5 inch base lift kit is the foundation for the ST4 and CT4 lift kit systems. It contains all the vital parts to fit larger tires, it improves off-road capabilities all while enhancing the on-road experience. The coil springs are designed specifically for the JL Wrangler. Terraflex was able to maintain the softer JL spring rate and still address the bowing issue, which has been a concern since the JL's release. This is done with a spring design that allows for a shorter active spring without losing coil containment at full droop. The corner-specific rear springs eliminate any side sag caused by the weight from the fuel tank. We will show the installation on the passenger or right side of the vehicle, but both sides can be done at the same time. Raise the vehicle in the air and remove the wheels and tires. Remove the front sway bar links. To disconnect the sway bar link from the sway bar, you will need to use a combination of an 18mm wrench and a 6mm allen to keep the stud from spinning. An air gun will also make quick work of it. After both sway bar links have been removed, swing the sway bar up and out of the way. Loosen, but do not remove the bolt on the frame end of the track bar. Remove the bolt on the axle end of the track bar and move the track bar out of the way. Disconnect the brake line from the bracket. Doing so prevents the brake line from being stretched. Discard the bracket, it will not be reused. Remove the axle actuator plug by pushing in the locking tab. Remove any zip ties or plastic clips connecting the line to the upper control arm. Disconnect the breather hose on the axle. On the Rubicon, there is a locker actuator plug that you will also need to disconnect. Due to the lift kit height, the caster angle needs to be corrected. Terraflex offers several different options for caster correction. Videos for these options can be found on the Terraflex website or YouTube channel. Loosen, but do not remove the control arm bolts. The front upper control arms have a heat shield on the frame end. Move the heat shield out of the way or remove it if you want to. Support the axle and remove the bolt on the axle end of the front shock. Raise the vehicle or lower the axle until the springs are loose. Be aware of the brake lines, ABS lines, and any other wires. As much as possible, avoid stretching these. Remove the spring. If you have the Falcon bump stops, install them at this point. These bump stops are included as part of the ST4 and CT4 lift kit systems. They are not included with the base lift kit, but are available for individual purchase. Install the new Terraflex coil spring, set the front bump stop strike pad into place, inside the coil spring, and then set the lower end into place. Be sure the bottom of the spring matches up with the spring index. If you need to add or remove the strike pad shims, you can do so through the gaps in the springs. Using the provided tool, tighten the bolt and nut for the bump stop. Included in the written instructions is a tire clearance guide. This is a good starting point for running larger tires on the JL Wrangler. The idea behind modular bump stop strike pads is to allow a customized strike pad height. To optimize strike pad configuration for maximum travel and clearance, careful setup and testing will be required. Lower the vehicle or raise the axle back up into place. The spring isolator can fall out of position. Make sure it aligns correctly. Attach the shock to the mount using the factory bolt and then install the TerraFlex brake line anchor bracket before feeding the nut onto the bolt. Set the ABS line and brake line into the rubber grip. Attach the zip ties to hold it in place. Trim the zip ties, tighten the nut and bolt. Reconnect the breather hose, axle actuator plug, and any plastic retainers you removed. Install the new front sway bar link. Set the four and a half inch lift front track bar bracket into place. 
Reinstall the flag nut onto the sway bar link bolt, but do not tighten it all the way. Install the spacer and one of the provided bolts into the lower hull of the track bar bracket. The flat part of the spacer faces up. Install the provided flag nut from below. Set the track bar into place and align the track bar with the upper hole of the bracket. Insert the bolt and finger tie in the nut on the back side. Tighten the sway bar link bolt. Tighten the bolt connecting the TerraFlex front track bar bracket to the axle bracket. Moving to the rear, loosen but do not remove the control arm bolts. Remove the emergency brake cable bracket located on the vehicle body directly above the rearmost driveline joint. This bracket will not be reinstalled. Pull down on the emergency brake cable and clamp a pair of locking pliers onto the e-brake eyelet. Disconnect the e-brake line from the eyelet. Leave the locking pliers in place until the e-brake line is reattached. Disconnect the e-brake line from the axle. The connector has three tabs that don't press in easily, so use pliers here. Detach the e-brake lines on both sides before proceeding. On vehicles with pre-installed lockers, the locker actuator wiring is connected to the e-brake lines. Detach the brackets and you can remove them from the wiring. You will not reattach these. Feed the cables up over the cross member and fuel lines. These cables will now travel underneath the cross member and fuel lines. Reattach the e-brake cables in reverse order, first to the axle and then to the eyelet. Finally, remove the locking pliers. Make sure the cables don't hang down below the axle. Loosen, but do not remove the bolt on the frame end of the rear track bar. Remove the bolt on the axle end of the rear track bar and move the track bar out of the way. Support the axle and remove the bolts connecting the lower end of the shocks to the axle. Remove the sway bar links and move the sway bar up out of the way. Detach the brake line bracket from the axle. Lower the axle and remove the spring and spring isolator. Install the TerraFlex rear springs with the factory spring isolator. Make sure the end of the spring matches up with the spring index on the spring isolator. Be sure the rear springs are installed on the correct side. If there is any doubt about which spring should go driver or passenger, then consult the part number written on the spring. To prevent any contact with the frame during articulation, the sway bar link is installed upside down with the swivel stud on the axle end. To connect the sway bar to the link, the provided button head bolts are installed from the inside pointing out. Installing the sway bar link this way ensures the frame cannot make contact with the sway bar link hardware. Reconnect the shocks. Reconnect the brake line brackets. Temporarily set the TerraFlex rear track bar bracket into place and feed the bolt into the lower hole to keep it from moving around. Move to the side and mark or punch a spot on the axle bracket in the center of the two side holes. Then remove the TerraFlex rear track bar bracket. Drill pilot holes at the marks. For the rest of the drilling, we move to the inside of the bracket to give enough space to fit the larger drill bits. Drill the holes to half an inch. Because of the hardness and thickness of the axle bracket, it is best to drill in steps from the pilot hole up to a half inch. Deburr the holes. If you want, you can touch up the holes with paint. Set the TerraFlex rear track bar bracket back onto the axle bracket. Install the two short M12 bolts and nuts into the side holes. Install the M14 bolt with the spacer into the lower hole. Tighten the two side bolts and the bolt with the spacer before proceeding.
Reinstall the axle end of the track bar. There are two positions the track bar can be placed. The upper hole is for four and a half inch lifts. The lower hole is for two and a half to three and a half inch lifts. Choose the hole that best matches your lift height. Install the rear bump stop strike pads by placing the mounting plate onto the axle bracket. Two holes on the mounting plate line up with holes on the axle bracket. Use these to attach the mounting plate using the provided hardware. Place the rear bump stop strike pad onto the mounting plate and insert the mounting strap into the slot on the bump stop strike pad. Insert the hex cap bolts and lock washer from below and screw them into the mounting strap. Replace the wheels and tires, and once the vehicle is back on the ground, torque all the control arm bolts to factory specifications. Final tighten the bolts on the front track bar, connecting it to the axle and then to the frame. Do the same for the rear track bar. 